How about after parties? I never talked about after parties. I thought it'd be fun to talk about. I don't know how it works. I don't know if like, let me know, like, do you guys do after parties everywhere? Like, is there after parties on the West Coast, Central, like, you know, in the Midwest, is there after parties? Is it just an East Coast or Northeast thing? Like, I don't know, but I know that after parties, at least where I'm from, are a big deal. They happen often. A lot of venues do them. When it comes to after parties, like venues will offer an after party space, usually the cocktail hour room or like a the you know around the bar next to the ballroom, like right on the side there somewhere. Like they'll have a space where when you book a venue, they'll tell the client like, hey, you know, if you want to have an after party, you can do it from this to this time. We'll have a open bar. We serve drunk food, and you still keep the open bar going. And then you know you, you can have a DJ, you know, play some music and you know get wild that sort of thing. Now. Some venues, especially the Philly venues, they have literal contracts with DJs where like when you book, if you book your wedding at the ballroom at the Ben and you have an after party there, you have to use their after party DJ. So that's not something like we can personally sell if you're DJing the wedding. But it's also a cool thing. Check if you live near a city and like you, you know venues that do this. If you're trying to get your beak wet with weddings, but you don't want to like jump, you know, take a jump and just like get into them right away. That's a great way. Like, you know, working out a deal with a venue. I think they make, I think they charge four or 500 bucks for like an hour or two hours, maybe, you know, something like that usually. But you, you do, you know, you say, I'm going to do all the after parties for these weddings. You DJ, it's a small setup. You DJ 12 to two or 12 to one. And it's a great way to get your beak wet. Cause you're just, you're getting a bunch of drunk wedding guests and you get to just mess around, see what works, da da da. But there's no pressure at that point. Right. So it's good for that. But beyond that, you know, if the venue obviously offers it, you know, we can't offer it, offer it because they make you use their DJ. But then there's a lot of venues that offer it. And then, you know, the client will ask, you know, do you do after parties, yada, yada, yada. And I just want to explain kind of how we set everything up, like how, you know, how I work it. Right. So first of all, obviously, it's a separate setup. Basically, what I use is a controller. Um, the mic is optional. I kind of feel out, do you want me to use it? I don't use a mic unless they ask me to. Like, if, unless there's like specific announcements they want me to make or something like that. Otherwise, I don't use a mic. It's, I think it's just all about the music there. You know what I mean? Like, I really don't use a mic there. It's just controller, speaker. I think, spe you know, the best speaker would be, um, you know, a column array, like a J8, an Evox 12, an Evolve 50, something like that, you know, where you have like a bass and a top. So it's like more of an even sound. Or if you got a really thumping like 15. You just need some kind of low end, you know, don't go in there like a 10 inch speaker because it's just like, it sucks, you know, on the low end, you know, I think low end matters. So because it, it'll be a smaller crowd, everything else, you don't need nothing big, but usually just one speaker, controller, laptop, mic is optional. And then you need an assistant if you're going to do an after party, because who's going to break everything down? The, 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 the tricky part logistically is the wedding ends, they go right to the after party. So if the wedding ends at 11, the after party's from 11 to 1230. They go right to the after party. You got a DJ after party till 1230. And most venues aren't going to be cool with you breaking down after 1230. So you got to break down your after party setup, then go break down your main setup, then get out of there. Like the venue's not going to get out of there till 2 a.m., you know, 3 a.m. So, you know, it's definitely a good idea to have an assistant or multiple people with you so they can break down the main setup while you're doing the after party. So keep that in mind. 1000%. Or if you don't have an assistant, you don't want to bring one, make sure it's okay that you're not going to get out of there at, till whenever time. Check with the venue. You don't want them freaking out on you. It's stressful. Now, what to play at the after party? Um, after parties are fun because you get to, you want to take like a deeper dive, right? You can get away with more at an after party. Like you, I basically always just look to take a deeper dive into what I was already playing at the wedding. At the actual wedding, like if, if, if the, all right. If the couple's into Drake, at the actual wedding, I'm definitely going to play God's Plan. Definitely going to play Sicko Mode. Definitely going to play Motto. Right? The main shit. At the wedding. Unless they want... I mean, this is all... Everything's variable. Okay, they could say, well, no, I really wanted this or whatever, and you play that. But generally speaking, I like Drake. I'm going to shoot for his hits that everyone's going to know. He said, do you love me? I told, right? You're going to go for the hits. But if they like Drake and you're doing their after party as well, you can dive deeper. Play child's play, right? Free smoke. Hello, motherfucker. Hey, hi, how you doing? It's Weezy, you know, like shit like that. You can dive deeper than you would at a wedding with the parents and everything there. So have fun with it. And make a separate playlist. Even if they didn't give you any songs, you know, 
if they gave you a large playlist and you see some songs in their playlist that like would work for the after party, check with them. Hey, you, you care if I save a couple of these for the after party? And they'll let you know. Sometimes they want it for the actual wedding. So think of that. But then also look through your hard drive. I look through like my club crates, all that. And I try and design, you know, I don't pre-make my set, but like, you know, I put a bunch of songs in a folder that I think like would work. That would be a lot of fun. You know what I mean? That like, and they're fun to play too. And remember, you're going to have a very drunk crowd. So it's going to be like, they're going to be drunk. They're all going to be like, they're, all, they're already going to be pumped up everything. So like you can hit them with some shit, you know, and it'll be like a lot of fun. And a lot of times, even after parties, they even suggest that like I do want to music. And then I end up just going through my cl um, club crates. And it's a great time. But as far as like the whole flow of it, so you're going to have people trickle it into the after party. They got to find it, right? Depends on the logistics of like the room, the place, everything else. Sometimes it takes a few minutes. I always start with like my open doors. Open doors is um, when, when you're coming from cocktail hour, you go into the reception, they open the doors to the ballroom. What do you play then? Back in the day, you just played smooth jazz and was chilling. But I highly recommend you play the in-between stuff. Not dance floor bangers, but shit you could sexy walk to your seat to. You know, I start around like 110, 115, 120, 128, and I, I keep it within that realm. You know, 115 to 128 ish, that realm. All the, you know, uh, music in a sushi restaurant or whatever, the Harry Styles, uh, uh, Don't Stop, the, the, what's that one song? Uh, everybody, move your feet, and move your feet. Yeah. Uh, junior, senior, whatever. Things like that, right? Things I wouldn't necessarily play for dancing, but like they're great, like upbeat kind of songs. So, I start with kind of open doors type stuff, things I didn't play. Maybe I have to add to it, you know, like I, I plan that. So like people coming in, it's just, it's bopping, but you're not like dropping back. You don't want to like, you don't want to be dropping bombs or dropping these crazy songs when people walk in. It's like overwhelming, you know, cause they're going to, they're going to sober up on the walk there, but then you want them to walk in and be like, oh shit. Yeah. Party number two. Let's keep this shit going, you know? And then, and then that way you can get into the groove. So I start with the doors open and I, I slowly kind of get into a groove. And hopefully, you know, within 30 minutes, the room is kind of packed with whoever's coming to the after party. And then you can kind of start hitting them with some shit, you know? And, and then that's how you get in your groove and you see where kind of the night takes you. And then you start hitting the folder that you hopefully made. And don't be scared to drop some shit, okay? Like some shit, some, some hard stuff, like... Like, like some super deep or hard hip hop, things like that, like anything. And that's where like the conversations, like, like we, we talked about earlier with the sales meeting, you, you like, you ask them like, what do you guys listen to? Like on the daily and like, they're going to be reluctant to tell you some of it because they don't think it's wedding music. Well, that's where you can really get away with a lot of that stuff. You know, if you ask those questions, you kind of dug deep and they let you know that, Hey, you know, well, yeah, I'm a really big biggie fan, but like, I like his like, you know, like, you know warning and like you know what i mean like like all like the real shit not the like the super not not more money more problems you know then that's where you can you know take all that shit out and play it and 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 then they're going to be drunk on top of it it's like so much fun you'll have so much fun with it so that's where those questions pay dividends you know you want to know have a good understanding of what they want for the wedding but also what they like in general and you can really navigate these waters and drop some shit but just don't force anything you know don't, um, sometimes at after parties, they can be a little lame. There's a couple factors to this. Sometimes people don't go to it. You know, some people, sometimes, you know, people get lost. They're so, sometimes people are so drunk. They don't make it to the room. They just get lost. They end up smoking weed outside and then they leave. They forgot all about the after party, right? Sometimes, you know, it, it's just, you, you just don't want to force it. I've had after parties where it's like more a five or a six, the level of energy, people are tired. Sometimes people aren't big partiers, you know? So like they, they, they busted their nut at the wedding. <laughs> so like they get to the after party, it's like, you know, they're just tired afterwards or whatever. Don't force it. You know, if you have that situation, read the room, people. Read the room. Always read the room. Sometimes you want to just play like some good, feel good vibes, a couple sing-alongs, whatever. See if you can build it up, but you never get a chance to build it up where you want to go. You, you can only build it up to a six or seven because beyond that wouldn't feel right. You know, read the room. You never want to be that DJ that like looks like he's trying real hard, you know, or he or she's like literally like dropping some shit and people are looking over like, whoa, easy, easy. I relax. We get it. You're trying to get us to like part. You know what I mean? Like you, you, cause, cause then they sense the fear and then you're really screwed and then they're going to get out of there, you know, or you, you make the music louder and louder cause you're trying to get them to dance and before you know it, you're blasting them out and then they're leaving. You know, don't force anything. Read the room, okay? It's okay to have an after party where you're kind of just playing vibes and that's it. 
after parties are unpredictable. You never know. Sometimes they're complete shit show ragers, projectile vomiting all over the place, clothes flying everywhere. And sometimes they're chill. They're chill. Sometimes people are just sipping after, after, after hours drinks. They're sipping Sambuca and smoking cigars. You know, you never know. So don't force it. And then as far as what to charge, um, if you're wondering, if you don't know what to charge for this sort of thing, I, I think you should use this formula. Just my personal opinion. I don't do a lot of business shit on this channel. So like, you know, whatever. Just my personal opinion, what I think you should charge. It should be this. Um, I made an equation, right? Your ceremony cost plus your additional hour rate. In my opinion, that's what it should be. So whatever you charge for ceremony, add that to your extra hour. And that's it. Because again, it's a separate setup. So you want to charge for separate setup. Ceremony is a separate setup. So whatever you charge for that. 200, 300, 500, whatever it is, you know, you char charge that, that's for the setup. And then it, it's per hour. So like the additional hour rate, if it's only a half hour after party, which is rare, but you, you, you charge half the hour rate, right? If it's two hours, you charge double, whatever, but that covers your time. And then it covers the extra setup. That's right where you want to be in my opinion. So most after parties, you're going to come to 500 to a thousand to 1500, depending on, you know, in that range, depending on what you charge and how long it is for and all that. And then beyond charging everything, one little bonus tip. Because I made this mistake once. Always confirm that all the guests are invited. Always confirm. Sometimes the couple doesn't want everybody to know about the after party. This happens. And what happened with me is the planner told me. The planner was like, yo, uh, can you announce the after party? I'm like, all right, bet. I wasn't DJing the after party, but like, there was just, just wasn't after party. I was like, all right, cool. And I announced it. And the couple was like, yo, we didn't want to announce that. Like we didn't, and I'm like, oh, we didn't want like uncle, uncle rich to come or whatever. Like, you know what I mean? Like we, we, we really didn't want to keep that on low. Don't, don't, don't announce it again. And they're like trying to keep it on low. And I felt mad, bad. I was like, oh shit. So now I always ask, you know, is this a public after party? Does everybody know about it? We're going to make a big announcement at the end of the night. You know, first of all, ask if there is an after party and then ask if it's like public. Should everybody know? Or is it kind of on the low key? If you know, you know, kind of thing. And then you don't announce it at all. So keep that in mind. Sometimes they only want certain people at the after party because they're planning on getting weird, you know? So don't jump to conclusions with that. Even if the planner tells you, don't trust a planner. No offense to planners, but never trust a planner. They don't, they, you know, they're not, they make mistakes too. They're humans too. You know, you got to triple check your shit. But yeah, and that's how I handle after parties overall. 